Watch as the clouds he rides swing low. Lift up the sound as he makes our praise throw. Behold the Lord. Hi, I'm here with Joel Houston and the Hillsong team as we talk about Behold, one of the great songs of our Let There Be Light album. Joey, I love this song and I know that you are the writer of it, so do you want to tell us a little bit about where it came from, the inspiration behind it? Yeah, um, I was really, really tired. Um, <laughs> and it's funny because I'd actually flown from, we just finished tour and I was like, the last thing I was thinking about was writing right. and got in a plane, flew from... Los Angeles to Sydney. Um, I got stuck at the airport, um, which was not a big deal, except for I was really tired and I was trying to get staff retreat with everybody. And, uh, and so there was no car, so I didn't know what to do. So I was just sitting there eating McDonald's and um, <laughs> I started just thinking about stuff and thinking about, um, I don't know, when I'm tired, you know, just used to think, I was thinking about God like you do. And, and then eventually I managed to get a hold of um, a, a car and I, we had to, I drive, like two and a half hour drive. Um, and while I was driving, the radio wasn't working. So I was just singing and no instrument, nothing. I just started singing these melodies and, um, and, and kind of framing all these, these strange melodies. And I've literally got so many of them in my phone, but I lost track of where I was going. And because I was recording on my phone, I wasn't looking at the, the GPS, you know? So I ended up driving like two and a half hours past where I had to go without realizing it. And I thought I was still on the way. And I realized when I hit this, this, like this giant mine out in the middle of nowhere that I'd gone too far. And then I didn't matter. I just kept driving. So I drove for about five hours, got there really late. And the, the melodies just started framing. It was like I was just singing this melody over and over. And it was like every time I sung it, one time it was around about the Father, one time it was about the Son, the Holy Spirit, and then um, about when he returns. And, and it was just like, just kind of unpackaging who God is and um, behold, which had, had been a, a theme for our church this year, it just, it just fit as the, each time I started, it was like behold, and then it was just really natural. And um, so the whole thing was written during a car trip and I got to staff retreat and I was like, I think this like sums it up for me at least, you know, and just the concept of like what behold means because it's used all the way through the Bible. It means to like see like to take note and every time it's used in the bible it's like the writer or god saying hey like i know that you've been reading i know that you've been listening but stop i w really want you to take note of this next thing like i want you to to get this one bit and so every time we read it in the bible i feel like it's it's an opportunity to like slap yourself in the face and go okay what's god trying to say here what's he wanting us to see uh in the midst of this and and i you know then sings my soul how Great Thou Art is such an amazing song. And um, the whole thing, you know, is this picture of what God has, creation, what God has done. And, and, um, and it's the ultimate response when you see his beauty and, and all of the, his creation. And the response is, well, then sings my soul, how great thou art. And, um, and so I was, it, that wasn't a plan to put that lyric in there. Right. It just seemed like the natural thing to sing after. Um, so behold, this is who God is. So it's kind of taking the same refrain I guess but like attaching it to who God really is and I think if, if there's one thing that God wants us to see it's, a, it's to recognize who he is not what the world makes it not what our idea of God makes it not no but the truth about who God is he's a loving father he is uh, an incredible precious savior and he is our friend uh, like the Holy yeah. Spirit is our help and comforter and so um, that's kind of the whole song in a nutshell, but it really, it's one of those ones that just felt different from the get-go. I think it's so beautiful that we get to sing about God as Trinity, because I think that's one of our core beliefs as Christians. God as what? As a Trinity. Oh, I thought you said trendy. I was like, <laughs> I guess God's trendy. He never goes out of trend. He's always good. <laughs> no, but as a Trinity, I feel like it's maybe like a modern version of There is a Redeemer, you know, the old yeah. Keith Green song? Yeah. Because it My feels favorite. like it kind of follows that journey. Yeah. It's beautiful. Definitely. And I feel like it's kind of like every song that I've ever loved has somehow inspired like, like the melodies, you know, like there's all this, I'm like, oh, that sounds like a Keith Green song and that sounds like this and you know what I mean? Like, but it's all in there, you know, and, and, um, and I don't know, it's one of those things that, you know, you visualize people singing. Yeah. 
And I remember we did it at conference, first time we ever did it, and kind of got to that chorus. And because and, um, and the melody structure is a little bit strange, but I think once you hear it a few times, you get it. Right. Um, and, and so seeing people pick it up, but when it got to that chorus, like just what you saw <laughs> in like here, it was just a beautiful moment. And I think, you know, um, right. it's just a... And we've, we've also sung that song at church in a chapel of like 300 people yeah. and had the same result, like with stripped That's back, cool. no instrumentation. And you see every hand lifted singing that song. Yeah. I can't sing it up, like it's too high for me. Right. But it's kind of written so that it's meant to be like, um, I sing it with Brooke. And I like that it starts like, because it's, it's very corporate at the beginning. The, the, uh, the beginning, it's all about the father. and He's a father to all of us. And then it kind of gets personal during the Jesus verse. And then by the time you get to the Holy Spirit verse, it's really intimate. So I love that it kind of goes out of this big moment all the way back to just like one voice. I think it's the kind of thing that I think a girl could sing it. We do it in, um, in the key of B. And a girl could sing it there in church and it's fine. Or, and a guy can sing it there if they have a voice that's like, I can't sing very high. So I just sing somewhere in the middle. And it doesn't matter <laughs> because everyone else sings it. So it's really fun because I can sing the verses and then get to the chorus I don't even have to sing because... It just kind of takes care of itself. But I think you could move this song uh, around a bunch of different ways. And I've, like I've thought about if I did it in D, if I was singing it by myself, I'd do it in D and just sing the chorus down, right. let it fall into the, into the chorus rather than have to become this big anthemic moment. So, yeah. Awesome. So, Nigel Rortz, are there parts of the song that you should show us? <laughs> Teach us how to play some of it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jolly mentions in the key of B, so um, once again I've got the capo on the fourth fret, which allows me to play it in that. Um, have those voicings. Um, the song, the song goes on a journey, and it starts like really delicate, and then gets gets big, and um, and the approach from from the musicians who play it needs to have that same. It needs to start pretty delicately. So when I play it on the acoustic, it's it's not all guns blazing or like a s set rhythm. It's just very like. That sort of vibe. Now there's a there's a little guitar line that that happens in the verse, and if you if you dare to play it as well, you know it'll sound something like. Um, so if you can get that, that's a really nice like a nice touch you can add to the verse. And again, like as the song grows, it still maintains like a sixteenth feel. Um, so if you listen to what the drums are playing, um, it's very that sort of even, it's not like a that sort of vibe, it's just very so if you can keep that rhythm throughout it'll really help um, with the, the feel and the identity of the song right. yeah. and then like that end behold the Lord our God will lead us home Yeah. so we've sung it at church with and without that, depending yeah. on where it fits in a service. Mm. Is that okay? Of course it's okay. <laughs> you can sing any of it or none of it or all of it. You know, to me, it's just, it just finishes up the journey. And funnily enough, the melody's a little bit different there because that was the first melody when I was driving the car right. that was there. And I don't know, it just felt like the right thing to say what that scripture is saying there. So it's like um, just talking about you know Jesus coming back again and and um and then we'll sing it again and sings my soul forever and ever after that so if you don't sing it in church now it's cool because we'll be doing a whole lot of singing in the anyway <laughs> like I don't know like it's um I like it because it just finishes the story yeah and uh, I actually think the best probably use for this song is that you can tag the, the chorus part pretty much into any worship song at any tempo and any key and it'll work so yes. I think that's kind of where it'll, it'll I think a lot of worship leaders will be able to use it. Awesome. I love it. I can't wait to sing it again on Sunday morning. So, thank you. Oh.